Throughout the night, thoughts linger in Alfreda's mind. In his room, he was quietly thinking, it is diffused in a formless melancholy. The tranquil murmurs that he hears, all the way from his brick-tad Azutea, where Don Julian and Carmen were busy talking about Alfredo. Papa, and when will the long table be set? Well, she does not seem to be in much of a hurry. Why is he not a bit excited? He's so happy. And he's still a bunch of a poor Esperanza. She must be tired of waiting. The pace you're speaking of is natural enough for a beginning. How can a woman be in a hurry when the man does not hurry her? They throw <laughs> this engagement long time ago. Papa, do you know how in love Alfredo was? In love? With who? Why with Esperanza? Of course, as far as I know, we did not have any love affairs. What I do mean is in the beginning, he is really enthusiastic. I mean the flowers, serenades, notes. Do you know those romantic things that he used to do? I suppose to engage people are like that. What do you think happened? I think they are calmer than one. Besides that, as I see it, it was Alfredo's race with skating you. Later that day, Don Julian persuaded his son to come with him and visit Judge Delval's home. Please come in. Come, Alfredo. We should visit Judge Delval's home. Dad, I'm quite busy right now. Come on, Alfredo. A short break would not hurt you. Besides, a judge as good will know. It is why a rising young now is trouble. Okay, okay. Can you please give me a time to fix up myself? That's the spirit, my boy. Now, hurry up. Good afternoon. Why yes, didn't anything? Oh no, we are here to visit the judge. Oh, by the way, my name is Don Holian and this is my son Alfredo. Oh, nice to meet you. I am Julia. Oh, come in. Thank you. Oh, thank you for the file. Well, just call the judge. Why if it isn't Don Julian? What a pleasant surprise. It is nice to finally meet you, Judge Delva. May I introduce my son? He's attorney Alfredo Salazar. You're a lawyer? Yes, I currently am. Well, it is nice to meet you. By the way, this is my wife, Donia Adela. It is a pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Come on, let's take a seat. Thank you, Miss Dilba. Oh, actually, she's my sister. I'm Julia Sass, then Adelina's sister. Oh, so sorry. I keep calling Miss Dilba. No, it's nothing. It's just I was about to correct you, but I remember similar experience I have once before. Mm, there was this guy named Manala, which I keep calling him Manalo, correcting me after 10 times or so. He throws from the seat and said, Pardon, my name is Manala. Manala. And you know what? I never forgive him. Days has passed. And there was a mass. After mass, Alfredo and Don Julian visited the judge's home. Doña Adela would offer them beer, and then the judge and Don Julian were playing another round of chess. While they're playing, 
Julia and Alfredo went outside and talked for hours. It seems like they have grown a quite a relationship, where they talked and laughed and chatted day away. A while later, Esperanza was confused by Alfredo's behavior. Esperanza was quite uncomfortable by this girl next door. So, to make her case closed, she went to Alfredo and asked. Where did you go after the mass? Sometimes I go with dad to visit the judge and sometimes because of work. That's what he said. Oh, I see. I understand if it's the sake of your work. Sweet Esperanza. Even though she was bothered, she decided to drop the topic. She was not prone to indulge in unprovoked jealousies. She was a believer in the regenerative virtue of institutions. If a man were married, why of course he loved his wife. If he were engaged, he could not possibly love another woman. The half lie what he had not admitted openly to himself, that he was giving Julia Salas something which she was not free to give. He realized that, yet something that would not be denied beckoned imperiously, and he followed on. Oh, I found something. Is it? No, you. It's sweet. Are you so old? And heart's desire. Down there, the road's too broad, so trodden by feet, so barn of mystery. Mystery? That is so big. Not in some, not in you. You have no need for it, said mystery. I could study all of my life, but still not find it. It was easy to forget up there, away from the prying eyes of the world. So easy and so poignantly sweet. The beloved woman, he standing close to her, the shadows around, unfolding. While Julia and Alfredo are having a deep conversation, Don Julian and Judge Delval played a round of chess. While playing, Don Julian would drop a news at the judge. Aha! Uh -huh. Checkmate, my friend. Indeed it is. Let's play another round, Don Julian. Judge, would you like to take a little break and visit my plantation? Are you suggesting a vacation, Don Julian? Why not? We all need a break. Well, why not? A vacation is not a bad idea. Count us in. Let's start, shall we? A beautiful day where the judge and the dawn took a stroll around the plantation. while Carmen and Doña Adela gossip about their husbands and children. Alfredo and Julia took a quick stroll and found a place to rest and talk. I hope you're enjoying this. Very much. Except that it has to be this afternoon seems so short. This? I think we can see last time. We can do so. The last time? Why? Oh, you will be too busy perhaps. Do I say it's the industrial sale? 
a man is happier if he is. You say, kind and placid. Like, how about you, my boy? Then, who? I? <laughs> I would like to see your hometown. There is nothing to say. But the fox trees, the nut trees, the turns, the land, and sometimes the spiders. I will not go until you are there. Oh, me? But I'm here. Now you come to find it done. <laughs> We live in Kalinus, latest streets with trees. Would they find that? Mm. If you don't ask for Mr. Bat, I'll acquire about what? The house with the prettiest girl in the town. <laughs> there? You will lose your way. By the way, why did you say this is the last time? When? Tomorrow. Mm. Those words were stuck on Alfredo's mind. The fact of Julia leaving? The fact of not seeing her? How can he live with that? How did he ever survive his life without Julia? Those were stuck on his mind for days and days. Take you by the hand, you're the only one who understands. So I guess that it's time I asked you to be mine for all my days. I hope you'll stay I'll admit that I'm scared Cause I've never really cared as much as this It's worth the risk A double row of lights emerge from the church and uncoil down the length of the street like a huge jeweled band studded with glittering clusters where the saints' platforms were. Above the measured music rose the untutored voices of the choir, steeped in incense and the acrid fumes of burning wax. The sight of Esperanza and her mother sedately pacing behind Our Lady of Sorrows, behind destroyed the illusion of continuity and broke up those lines of light into component individuals. Esperanza stiffened self-consciously, tried to look unaware and could not. Slow blood began to beat violently. Irregularly, a girl was coming down the line, a girl that was striking and vividly alive, the woman that could cause violent commotion in his heart, yet had no place in the completed ordering of his life. Her glance of abstracted devotion fell on him and came to a brief stop. The line kept moving, wending its circuitous road, away from the church and then back again, where according to the old proverb, all processions end. At last, our Lady of Sorrows entered the church, and with her the priest and the choir, whose voices now echoed from the arched ceiling. The bells rang the close of the procession. Toward the end of the row of Chinese stores, he caught up with Julia Salas. The crowd had dispersed into the side streets, leaving Calerayel to those who lived farther out. It was past eight and Esperanza would be expecting him in a little while. Yet, the thoughts didn't hurry him, as he said.
Good afternoon. I thought you were gone. No, sister. I just need to see you. Is the judge going? Yes. Um, I wish to congratulate you. For what? For your wedding. Is the wedding interesting you? If it's friends, yes. Mm. Would you come if I ask you? Mm. When it's gonna be? This coming May. Would you come if I ask you? If you ask, then I'll ask you. Then I will be there. Julita, mm -hmm. have you ever tried being in a situation where you needed to choose what you wanted and what is right? Uh, no. I thought you've experienced then. You understand a man such in a situation. You're fortunate. Is this man sure what he should do? I don't know, Julita. Perhaps not. about her badness. But do you agree? Of what? What she did. <laughs> no. Well, all I say is not that bad. You talk like an immoral man. I don't know where your ideas are coming from. My idea? No. The only thing I want to apply is fairness. Am I hurting anybody? No. She has injured us. She was ungrateful. What is wrong with you, Esperanza? Why are you being modern, Fredo? But I think I know you've been so indifferent with me recently. What? What do you mean? I'm not blind, Alfredo. Nor deep. I can see and hear the things you wanted to hide from me. Why didn't you speak out frankly before it's too late? Esperanza, if you suppose I... If you want to take back your words and promises, why didn't you say that you're tired of me? Are you tired of me, Alfredo? Huh? Answer me! If you can't answer me, then goodbye, Alfredo. I can love you. weeping that left him completely shamed and unnerved. The last word had been said.
even without saying, I can see the sadness in your eyes, the coolness that I could feel a mile away, the burning love we once had now has come to cold end. I may be the one walking towards you in this aisle. I may be the one marrying you, yet you still long for her and you still need her. This was supposed to be the dream for mine that has come true. Yet all of this feels like a nightmare. I wish it was you, my Rita, walking down the aisle. I wish it was you holding my hand, saying our vows. I wish it was you saying I do. Yet all of this is in my dreams. My reality is nothing but a big nightmare. Maybe this marriage could give me a chance. A chance to open your heart and let me in. A chance to let our love burn as bright as the sun. A chance to love me for eternity. A chance for you to fix my broken heart that you destroyed with your hands. Maybe instead of Esperanza, you would be here, my Julita. Maybe in another life, you would be my bride. But the universe alternating our destinies, where our paths do not collide. I do not have a choice. That, that is why, why I am saying. saying I do. The inner tumult was no surprise to him. In the last eight years, he had become used to such occasional storms. He had long realized that he could not forget Julia Salas. Still, he had tried to be content and not to remember too much. The climber of mountains was known the backbreak, the lonesomeness, and the chill. Finds a certain restfulness in level paths made easy to his feet. He looks up sometimes from the valley, where settles the dusk of evening, but he knows he must not heed the radiant beckoning. Maybe in time he would cease even to look up. He was not unhappy in his marriage. He felt no rebellion, only the calm of capitulation to what he recognized as irresistible forces of circumstance and of character. His life had simply ordered itself. No more struggles, no more stirring up of emotions that got a man nowhere. From his capacity of complete detachment, he derived a strange solace. The essential himself, the himself that had its being in the core of his thought. Would he reflect it? Always be free and alone. When claims encroached too insistently, as sometimes they did, he retreated into the inner fastness, and from that vantage he saw things, and people around him as remote and alien, as incidents that did not matter. At such times did Esperanza feel baffled and helpless. He was gentle, even tender, but immeasurably far away, beyond her reach. The vessel approached the landing quietly, trailing a wake of long golden ripples on the dark water. Peculiar hill inflections came to his ears from the crowd assembled to meet the boat. Slow singing cadences, 
characteristic of the Laguna Lake Shores beach. From where he stood, he could not distinguish faces, so he had no way of knowing whether the Presidente was there to meet him or not. 8 o'clock, lugubriously told from the bell tower, found the boat settled into a somnolent quiet. A cot had been brought out and spread for him. But it was too bare to be inviting at that hour. It was too early to sleep. He would walk around the town. His heart beat faster as he picked his way to shore over the rafts, made fast to sun-dry piles driven into the water. How peaceful the town was. Here and there a little tienda was still open, its dim light issuing forlornly through the single window which served as counter. An occasional couple sauntered by, the women's chinelas making scraping towns. From a distance came the shrill voices of children playing games on the street, to begin, perhaps, or hop and chicken. The thought of Julia Salas in that quiet place filled him with a pitying sadness. How would life seem now if he had married Julia Salas? Had he meant anything to her? Unforgettable red and gold afternoon in early April haunted him with a sense of incompleteness as restless as other unlaid ghosts. She had not married. Why? Faithfulness, he reflected, was not a conscious effort at regretful memory. A few inquiries led him to a certain little free sailing street, where the young moon waved indistinct filigrees of fight and shadow. In the gardens, the cotton tree threw its angular shadow athwart the lone stone wall. And in the cool, stilly midnight, the cock's first call rose in tall, soaring jets of sound, Kalia Luz. Somehow or other, he had known that he would find her house because she would surely be sitting at the window. Where else, before bedtime on a moonlit night? The house was low and the light in the sala behind her threw her head into unmistakable relief. He sensed rather than saw her start of a vivid surprise. Oh, good evening. She had not changed much. A little less slender, not so eagerly alive. Yet something had gone. He missed it. Sitting opposite of her, looking thoughtfully into her dark, fine eyes. She asked him about the hometown, about this and that, in a sober, somewhat meditative tone. He conversed in increasing ease, though with a growing wonder that he should be there at all. He could not take his eyes from her face. What had she lost, or was the loss his? Gently? Was it experimentally? He pressed her hand at parting, but his own felt undisturbed and emotionless. Did she still care? The answer to the question hardly interested him. The young moon had set, and from the uninviting cot, he could see one half of a star-studded sky. So, that was all over. Why had he obstinately clung to that dream? So all these years, since when, he had been seeing the light of dead stars, long extinguished, yet seemingly still in their appointed places in the heavens. This is the way that we both fall